Welcome to Cram with Camila, where we cram for the RD exam. Let's talk about vitamins and minerals. Starting with vitamins, we can divide them into fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins. Fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K. And I like to think of a deck, or you could say a deck, to remember them. Your accent, my accent, it doesn't matter as long as you know which ones they are. Starting with vitamin A. So vitamin A, we have established, it's a fat-soluble vitamin. The excess vitamin A is stored in the liver. That's why when I think of foods that contain vitamin A, I think the ones that are orange and yellow in color. But some that we may not think of would be dark leafy green vegetables and perhaps skim milk or foods that are fortified with vitamin A. Vitamin A toxicity happens with 10,000 IUs. So it turns out my mom was right. She always said, eat your carrots, it's good for your eyes. She was right on point because vitamin A is good for your vision and your skin. With that in mind, when you have a deficiency, you may see during, say, a nutrition-focused physical exam, you will see those bit hot spots in the eyes or dry, scaly skin. There is this thing called night blindness that's called nyctopia. That is reversible, but it can lead to xerophthalmia, which then is permanent damage to the cornea. So we can just think, Nick was having a hard time seeing at night until we progressed so much that he had zero vision. So it goes from nyctopia to zero thalmia. But remember that vitamin A can cause toxicity and pregnant women should be very careful how much vitamin A they consume. The next fat soluble vitamins that we're going to talk about is vitamin D, which you know can be synthesized from the sun, but it can also be obtained from foods. Now, there are different types of vitamin D, D2 and D3. Did you know that vitamin D is actually a steroid hormone that plays a role in absorption of calcium and phosphorus? So as I mentioned, you can get vitamin D from the sun, from eggs and from fortified foods such as milk that's fortified with vitamin D. Deficiency of vitamin D can lead to rickets in children and osteomalacia in adults. Vitamin E, tocopherol, is another fat-soluble vitamin and that's considered an antioxidant. And toxicity is very, very rare, even though it's a fat-soluble vitamin. Food sources of vitamin E include green vegetables, nuts, for example, almonds, and different oils.
when you have a deficiency, you may see hemolytic anemia, which is a disorder in which a person's red blood cells, they are destroyed much faster than the body can make new ones. Vitamin K is so much fun because turns out that vitamin K is made or synthesized by the bacteria in your intestinal tract. In the liver, vitamin K helps form prothrombin. Do you remember the whole like thrombin, prothrombin for blood clotting? So that's it. So perhaps that's why there are certain medications that when you take them, you need to watch your vitamin K intake. Sources of vitamin K include spinach, broccoli, kale, all those super, are they all superfoods? Because spinach, broccoli, and kale all sound to me like they're super good for you. Because vitamin K aids in blood clotting, deficiency can lead to hemorrhage. Also, taking antibiotics and anticoagulants can affect the levels of vitamin K, which makes sense, right? Because vitamin K forms prothrombin in the liver that we need that for blood clotting. But then if you're taking an anticoagulant, that's gonna affect it. Also, because you need the bacteria to synthesize vitamin K, when you take antibiotics and you kill all the bacteria, that is going to obviously affect your levels of vitamin K. Xerocthalmia, xerophthalmia. Can you make that any harder to say? Xerophthalmia, got it? Cholesterol is the precursor to vitamin D. Vitamin K is so much fun because it turns out that the bacteria in the colon are responsible for making vitamin K. I love that.